Hello, this is Deborah Yaw with Black Education TV. Hey family, you gotta ask yourself, what would make the Most High so angry to where he would open up the ground and swallow all of those people? Now you know that's what he did to the children of Yisrael. He did that to our people. That angry to where he opened up the ground and swallowed them. So his thinking had to be, it's enough of this. Now we know what the story tells you that they did to deserve such a fate. It's clearly outlined in scripture what they did to cause him to open up the ground and swallow them. But it had to be a buildup because even Moses had gotten to the point of anger to where he smote the rock, you know? Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine what the Most High must have felt. And see, in today's time, you have people making snide remarks about the Most High, saying things like um, he was a, I remember um, one Gentile said he was a mean SOB. That's why they like the God of the New Testament, as if is any different. You know, because they got that um, Christian hooju that they've performed, having our minds thinking that you can do whatever the heck you want to do, and that the Most High is going to just look the other way. That ain't how it works. We have to understand that the ground is still opening up. It's just different now. Before, his judgment was kind of like this. You go against what I tell you to do. You do all of this mess, I'm just going to open up the ground and swallow you. I'm just going to let you die in war. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. So thus we have these stories of 20,000 who were killed here, 20,000 slaughtered there, 40,000 killed here, whole armies wiped out, ground swallowed up, taking men and women, possibly even some children, right? But in today's time, it may not be concentrated in one area, but at any given moment, y'all have mercy on us, at any given moment, you may have situations to where two people are being shot over here. This person is dying from this. This person dies from that. This person is being killed over here. All around the world, wherever we've been scattered as the children of Israel, something is touching our lives in some form of judgment. It's both sad and frightening at the same time. Sad because someone has lost their life. Frightening because you know that the Most High has allowed this and he has unleashed judgment on his children. Because they refuse to obey, they refuse to repent, they've established their own righteousness, they think they can do whatever they want to do and that there will be no consequences. They think they can say whatever they want to say and there will be no consequences. That's the sad reality. And it just don't work like that. People have to understand that the Most High is not playing. We're talking about someone who opened up the ground. Hear what I'm saying now. Opened up the ground and swallowed the children of Israel because of some wickedness they had purposed in their hearts to do and they carried it out. So he's pretty much telling us, no, you can't do what you want to do. You think you can do what you want to do, but I'm going to show you you just can't. For those reasons alone, he deserves to be feared and revered. Understand, family? Feared and revered. All we can say is, Yah, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, your children. And when we ask him to cause us to repent... You have to understand what we're doing. I mean, that's the only thing that's going to get us out of our situation is repentance. Right? That's the only thing that will get us out of our situation. But when you say Abiyah calls us to repent, you're saying do whatever it takes. And sometimes judgment or chastisement is the thing that he uses to get out of us what he wants. I've always tried to get this on tape, on video, should I say. Uh, there's a airplane with two small aircraft in tow. I always tried to get that 
on video and so that's what that is you see before you but I'm talking about the judgment of Yah right I'm talking about how he unleashes there was a question that was presented to me I'll say a couple of weeks ago someone asked me to do a video explaining judgment and so I guess since I'm talking about something along those lines I'll go ahead and just address that really quickly I will address that really quickly here. I just wanted to get that airplane with the two small aircraft in tow. So the airplane with two helicopters. Okay, enough of that. Okay. Now to the person who had the question about judgment. One thing you have to understand, and I know why they asked the question, it was a particular video they asked this question on. Many of us, as so-called black people, we always wonder why it seems to hit our communities so hard, so harshly. And sometimes in your mind, you can think it's unfair. You can think that it is unfair. But when you know the scripture and you understand what the word says, then you, you tread lightly. The scripture says, judgment begins with the house of Yah. There's no point in us thinking it is not fair. Because Yah has his way in the heavens above and the earth below. The problem is too many people have gotten comfortable. And I believe Christianity has done this to us. It's gotten us comfortable thinking that, oh, he's a God of many chances. When you push that narrative without pushing the other side of it, the other side of it is this. And this was in one of the lost books. It actually said that this God... Well, this Elohim of mercy is also an Elohim of wrath. But when you have Christianity pushing only one side of it, oh, he's a God of love. God is love. God is merciful. God is so wonderful. And they don't push the side where the scripture actually says he's terrible, meaning terror. And it don't tell you that he's a God or Elohim of wrath. When they push one side of it, you, you tend to live your life loosely. You see, that's the thing right there. But when you keep in your mind all of the end samples or examples that we have from our ancestors, who the Most High was judging left and right, back and forth, up and down, left to the, from the left to the right, he opened up the ground. That was judgment for wickedness. And so for the person who don't understand judgment, judgment begins with the house of Yah. We are the chosen seed. The children of Israel. And whether you want to believe it or not, he says, I chastise those whom I love. Because you are beloved, there's chastisement for your wicked deeds. The, the word says that when we are judged, we are chastened of Yah. So that we will not be condemned with the world. So despise not the chest ties. Sometimes he's light-handed, sometimes he's not. Sometimes he takes it to the max. So family, as it relates to the Most High's judgment, stop playing with him. Stop playing these games with your soul. Some of you don't believe. There's nothing we can do about that. But I saw a meme the other day where this person said they were an atheist until they were facing down death. When death was staring them, staring them in their eyes, they had a change of heart. Now, isn't that something? So we have a lot to consider, family. You go about your life thinking that you can do things, and you're thinking that judgment is only for the people in the streets. No, some people are lost in the house. Some people think they know the truth or have the truth. This is why the word says, it is by the mercies of Yah that we are not all consumed. So those of you who sit and dwell on a high horse, those of you who are low to the ground, whatever your state may be, high or low, keep it in mind, keep it in your mind that it is by the mercies of the Most High God that we are not all consumed and that none of us can say for a certainty where we shall be. But what we must do is pray that we are counted worthy to escape the things that are coming up on this earth. Don't assume yourself to be worthy, but pray that you are counted worthy. 
And those of you who st still have sins, unrepentant sins under your belt that you have not resolved, what I have to say to you is tomorrow is not promised. With that being said, Shalom family.